Hello everyone and welcome to the second episode of this chess nerd um like 10 minute plus zero chess tournament that I'm playing just because why not? I thought it'd be quite interesting. We're against a 2371 rated player from India. This is gonna be rough. It's gonna be rough, but we got a Vienna. Oh uh, I have no idea how to play this line. Which is probably why he's playing it, right? I mean, knight d5 is the obvious move. I think he goes knight d5, bishop a5. I have actually seen this. Like, b5, sorry, b4, bishop b6. I think that bishop a5 is the main idea. You could just go to c5, I suppose. But then I could also still play b4. He does go to c5. Um, I have no idea how to deal with that, to be honest. But we'll try. We'll try. We could consider Queen G4. G6 is pretty weak. Queen F6 can't be played. Queen G4 going after G7. That just looks good. And I don't think Knight F6 is effective. Because takes... And obviously rook g8 can't be played because I take the knight with check, which is defending the rook. Yeah, he has to go g6. So that's a success. That's a success. This must be why this opening isn't viable for black. Let's go queen g3 so that d6 doesn't come with an attack. Although I suppose it's not that big a deal. Let's go bishop c4. And I think just like d3, maybe bishop e3. Maybe we keep the bishop to take advantage of these dart squares. Maybe we push this pawn. I think six moves in. This has been so far a big success. Because we have forced uh, Black to make this big concession. And we maintain a good development uh, advantage so far. We have a strong knight. Our bishop is pretty good. I mean our center is intact and fine. I don't really see an issue here. So we're also not down on time. Which is kind of crazy, because if you uh, know the channel, you know that's a rarity. By the way, this will be part of a playlist of the games that I play in this tournament. So if you haven't seen the previous game in the previous video, it'll be linked below. But you can also just go on my channel, sort by latest, and it'll be the one before this. So yeah, whichever way you want to get to it, you can find the first episode there if you haven't watched it. It was an interesting game. It was. It was a Karo Khan, and I love my Karo Khans. Okay, c6 is kind of expected. Um, let's drop the knight back. We don't really want to let black play d5 if we can help it. Um, yeah, just go d3, I think. I mean, the reason that black kicks my knight out is so that he can develop his knight more easily. I think this makes a lot of sense. We could have gone to h6 first, maybe. To boot the rook and then go back. Maybe that was a better idea, but whatever. We've done it now. We've done it. It's not that big a deal. Okay. The knight is weak, though. The knight is weak. h4, h6. Nah. If I'm tempted to go queen h4 to stop h6 and just apply more pressure. f4. Mm, I don't know if that feels right or not. Knight d7. Maybe f5? If h4, h6. Bishop, uh, maybe bishop d2. Or I could just develop. I could just go like knight to e2. Which feels unambitious. But I honestly think it's fine. If my opponent goes h6, I could consider bishop h4. Because g5, the g pawn is pinned to the king. So it wouldn't actually be threatening anything. And then we can maybe try and go f4. To open up some space um, on the king side. Rook e6. Sorry, not rook e6. Bishop e6. Takes takes just lets him support his knight more, so that's probably just not a good idea. I 
he takes us, it's not that big a deal, but I probably want to drop back, to be honest. Just because I'm more comfortable in this structure than if I bishop's on c4 in this structure. I know it's decent because you get a nice bind on the d5 square, but I don't perform well in that specific pawn structure. For those of you who I would say are below like 1600, as you learn more about chess, I think you'll realize more and more how important pawn structure is. That's something that I think I've only really started to grasp in the past year or so. And not, not pawn structure in the sense of like, oh, I've got um, a stronger pawn structure than you. But like you learn pawn structures. Like you learn how to play in different pawn structures and the ideas that stem from those structures and you feel more comfortable in different structures. Um, that I've only really started learning recently. I'm going to castle queenside because my opponent's much higher rated than me, right? But, well, no, no not even but. And, and that means that I need to try and go more at him because I've said in previous videos the way to tackle higher rated opponents, I think, is to go at them. So I need to take my own advice and I need to try and do it. I don't think his attack is particularly scary. We could go d4. Looks tempting. But then he might destabilize um, the e pawn, which I would rather not allow. <clears throat> H4 I don't think does anything. I'm going to do it, actually. Because if H6, take, take, H5, G5, we have F4. That looks decent. That looks decent. Yeah, okay, he goes H5 for that reason. So maybe f4. Again, I think I need to try and go at my opponent. So that's what I'm going to try and do. Let's try and open some things up in the center. Because my opponent's trying to tap me on the king side. He's done a good job at defusing my king side attack. So now I think I need to focus on the center. Take the focus away from the queen side, right? Apologies. Um, because, like, if I start responding to him on the queen side, the focus will shift to the queen side, and realistically, he is a better chess player than me, which is why he's higher rated, and he will crush me on the queen side if that's all I focus on. If you understand my logic here. So, to be fair, I do actually need to learn what I'm supposed to do against this opening but i think i handled it pretty well i may have let the i think i probably had some kind of advantage that i've let slip to some extent but we still have a decent position we're still doing all right here so let's see what we can do he takes on b3 okay let's take back not sure about that because he's taking eyes off of the f5 square and I was never going to take him anyway, because I didn't want to open up his rook. In knight e3, maybe looking at some of these squares. Makes sense. F1, looks decent. I could consider d4, actually. Now that this pawn is no longer under attack. F6 would put my bishop in danger though. And I don't have a good way out for the bishop. So maybe I just have to go F5. He can't really take me. Because I have bishop. Oh no I don't. I don't have that check. Sorry. The knight's blocking the way. I guess if we get an exchange here. That should just be weakening to black. I hope. But it also gives my bishop a way out and stops him from using the e3 square. So that's that's good. That's good. He could go bishop f3, but that probably just helps me. 
This knight has to be careful about move it, moving, though. He could go to f2 and fork my rooks. Honestly, I didn't really consider that. I don't know why. I should have, absolutely. That was really silly. Um, I could play f6 because knight f6, bishop f6, king f6, rook f1 would be a pin. But my opponent probably isn't going to play ball. Let's be realistic. We could go d4. But then he takes on f1 with an attack on my queen. So that doesn't work. If f6, something like king g8. Not sure. <clears throat> Don't think that works. This is honestly not great. This is not great. I've just blundered a silly um, fork. I don't know why I did that. Although I guess my bishop was in big trouble anyway. So maybe I didn't have a choice. But it's not good to not see things, right? You don't want to miss things. D4. There, there. If here. Nah, I'm, I'm trying to make silly things work with like some kind of attack. It just doesn't work realistically. Because the pawn taking always attacks my knight. It's wishful thinking. I'm going to go f6. I don't know whether I'm letting him off the hook by taking pressure off g6. But maybe we can try and beat him on the dark squares. I don't know. Maybe that's a like not completely insane idea. We'll see though. We'll see. I mean, obviously, I want to see knight takes because that's a blunder, but I think my opponent is far too good to be blundering that, in all honesty. So let's assume that he goes king g8 because it looks like the most logical move to me. Uh, these moves look bad because if my queen gets to h6, it could come with check. Ooh. That looks like a bad idea. Maybe I've got it. He just offered me a draw. What? He's just offered a draw. Why has he done that? See, I'm thinking Bishop D2. We set up discoveries on the Queen. And then try and play Queen G5. Um, to access H6. Right, that's my idea. Because going to h6 will come with check, which is the big thing. And if bishop d2, knight f6, okay, he said he has to go get food, and that's why he's offering a draw. Not gonna lie, I feel like he's actually telling the truth. I'm not really sure if this idea even works. It's like queen d8. Yeah, I'm actually just going to take his draw. I feel like he's just better here. Okay, it's minus 0.3. Or minus 0.2 actually. So, yeah, I... I thought that maybe I had something, and I might have gone about that in a decent way towards the end, but God, there are blunders all over the place for both of us here. Wow. Apparently, I'm doing really well here if I go rook hf1. If he takes on d1, go knight takes. And I did consider this line, but I thought there was nothing in it. Queen c7, queen f3. 
I don't see what the idea is. A5, F6, King H8. Oh, G4. Ah. Well, I didn't see that anyway. Um. Yeah, I didn't see that. King H7. This is a losing move anyway, so it's a good job that I took it. I needed to find this queen f3 g4 idea. Because basically what it means is if black takes on d1, then his knight no longer controls g4 and I can play g4. So I'm pretty lucky. Well, no, I'm very lucky. My opponent offered me a draw there because, yeah, I did not see that. But, but I think we played well. I mean, bishop b4, knight d5, bishop c5. Computer likes d4. Ain't no way I'm playing that. Queen g4. My opponent's best moves are bishop f8 and king f8, which realistically is not very playable. g6, queen g3, best move. Tackled the opening well. Bishop c4 is a mistake, though. b4, bishop b6. a4, knight d7. Bishop d3. And this is the best line, apparently. And then maybe trying to use the long diagonal? I have no idea. That is weird. But bishop c4 is not the way, apparently. Castle's a mistake. Bishop g5, king g7. Win h4 was the right idea. I didn't play it. Bishop b6. Here I should take. Go for queen h4, maybe set this up, I guess. Rook f7, f4, okay. I bd7, castle, queen a5, I'm winning. f4 is better than h4. Here I need to take and go d4. I guess if you take, then like there is a lot of loose pawns. I guess that's the idea. So d5, e5, knight h7, bishop e7, rook f7, bishop d6. Still difficult lines to find, but like, findable. f4, bishop b3, a b3, knight g4, f5, knight f2, go f6, king h7, and my opponent offers me a draw. Um, my, my plan didn't work anyway. My idea was that I could do something like, I guess not even take bigger queen g5, which is viable. But I thought knight f6 was an issue. Knight d5 apparently is winning though. Ah, because I set up the same idea as I wanted to do before with the king taking, except it's a queen on f6. Ah, yeah, see, my, my idea here was that this would be a pin. And it's the exact same idea if the queen takes on f6 in that line. I don't know why I didn't see that. That's really weird. Anyway, anyway, that's the game. I hope you guys enjoyed. And that puts us on one and a half out of two, having already played against the highest rated player in the tournament, I believe. Yes. Yeah, the highest rated player. So we don't have to play him again. So maybe we can make something happen this tournament. Make sure you check out the next episode if it is already uploaded. But I'll see you in the next video. Click the video that like shows up on the screen here. YouTube thinks you're really going to like it.